بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعزائي الدارسين بالفرقة الثالثة كلية التجارة جامعة القاهرة مجموعة الدراسة باللغة الإنجليزية السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وأهلا ومرحبا بكم وأهلا ومرحبا بكم في هذا اللقاء الافتراضي الثاني الذي أشرح لكم في الهدفين الثالث والرابع من الباب الرابع وهو المحاسبة عن تكاليف الأوامر الإنتاجية Hello dear students This is my second online session in which I will explain learning objectives number three and four of chapter number four, which is about job order costing. As illustrated in learning objective number one and two previously, the management accountant must make three choices for each of the three characteristics of costing methods. That is, number one, he or she must choose the proper cost accumulation method to be adopted. Is it job costing or process costing? Number two, also choose the cost measurement method. Is it actual, normal, or standard costing? Thirdly, he or she must choose the overhead assignment method to be applied. Is it volume-based or activity-based method? I also presented the relationships between those three characteristics of the costing methods as shown in the following slide. As for the cost accumulation method, as I illustrated previously, we have two main basic accumulation methods which are job costing and process costing. These are the two basic types of costing methods. If we choose to adopt job costing, then from the point of the cost measurement method, under job costing, we can adopt actual measurement method or normal measurement method or standard measurement method. Also, if we choose to use process costing, if it is uh, uh, suitable for the company, under this costing method, we can choose actual measurement method or normal or standard. From the point of view of the overhead allocation method, as I mentioned before, we have two allocation methods. One is 
called volume-based method, and the other is activity-based costing method. So if we choose to apply job costing system with an actual measurement method, the, under this method or approach, the, we can use volume based as a basis for uh, computing allocation rate or use activity based costing method. And the like, if we choose normal measurement, we can use volume based allocation rate or activity based allocation method. Also, if we choose the approach to be standard costing under this, we can use volume based method or activity based method and so on. As I mentioned before, this chapter number four will be concerned with illustrating job costing method and the cost measurement method will be either actual or normal costing. Allocating overhead costs using volume-based method. So allocating overhead costs using activity-based method will be explained in chapter number five, inshallah. So the characteristics of the job costing method, which will be illustrated in this chapter, is shown in shaded in the following exhibit compared with the other choices. That is, as I mentioned now, we have two main basic costing approaches. In chapter four, the concern is with job costing. Process costing will be illustrated later on. So we choose in this chapter to illustrate job costing approach or system. Under this job costing method, we can use actual method for cost measurement or use normal or standard. But we are not going to illustrate uh, uh, the standard method here because this will be a topic illustrated later on. And process costing with its three uh, approaches will not be illustrated here in chapter four, but they will be illustrated later on under chapter 17 and 16, okay. So we are illustrating here in chapter four, job costing system with actual measurement, then with normal measurement. And as for the overhead allocation method, we will use volume-based method. We are not going to use activity-based method in chapter four because it will be illustrated next in chapter number five. Also, if we choose normal costing method, we will use volume-based allocation. We are not going to illustrate activity-based because, as I said now, 
it will be the uh, topic of chapter number five. So the shapes shaded in red color is determining the outline of the illustration in chapter four. We are going to illustrate job costing using actual costing and volume-based allocation. Then we will transfer to illustrate job costing system using normal costing and using volume-based allocation. And now let us see actual, let us see cost measurement approaches. The three approaches of cost measurement, which are actual costing, normal costing, and standard costing. Costs in either a job or process costing system can be measured in their actual or normal or standard amount. As for actual costing, an actual costing system uses actual costs incurred for all product costs, including direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead. Actual costing systems are rarely used because they can produce unit product costs that fluctuate significantly, causing potential errors in pricing, in adding or dropping product lines, and in performance evaluation. Also, most actual factory overhead costs are known only at the end of the period, rather than at the completion of the batch of products. Thus, actual costing systems cannot provide accurate unit product cost information on a timely basis. We have to wait until the end of the period. As for the other method, which is normal costing, Normal costing system uses actual costs for direct materials and direct labor only, but normal costs for factory overhead. Normal costing involves estimating a portion of overhead to be assigned to each product as it is produced. Thus, a normal costing system provides a timely estimate of the cost of producing each product or job. As for the third system, which is standard costing system, <clears throat> standard costing system uses standard costs and the quantities for all three types of manufacturing costs. That is for direct materials and direct labor and factory overhead. All of these three types of manufacturing costs are measured in standards. Standard costs are expected costs 
which the firm should attain. Standard costing systems provide a basis for cost control, performance evaluation, and process improvement. This chapter number four will be concerned with explaining actual job costing and normal job costing systems. Chapters 16 and 17 and 18, all of these three chapters will be illustrating process costing systems. So we can now, to summarize, we can now see the different cost systems as for the cost elements mentioned now. Uh, here we, has, we have types of cost systems and here are the costing system, actual costing and normal costing and the standard costing. We have three costing systems, as I mentioned now, actual costing and normal costing and standard costing. We will see now under, <clears throat> under the actual costing system, direct materials are actual. We assign actual materials, actual direct materials to cost objects. And actual cost, this is for direct material. And under normal costing, also direct materials are assigned actual. Actual costs of direct materials are assigned in each of actual costing and normal costing. But the direct materials which will be assigned to cost objects, if we adopt the standard costing system, it will be standard costs, not actual. This is for the direct materials. As for the direct labor, direct labor is assigned to cost object at actual cost if we adopt actual costing. Also, it is assigned actually at actual costs if we adopt normal costing. But if we are to adopt standard costing, this cost element, direct labor, will be assigned at standard costs. As for the factory overhead, factory overhead will be assigned to cost objects, products, actually, actual costs if we adopt actual costing system but if we are adopting normal costing system so the factory overhead will be assigned on the basis of estimated estimated overhead cost using predetermined rate If we adopt standard costing system, this factory overhead will be assigned on a standard basis. So let us say in other words, if we adopt actual costing system, all the cost items will be assigned actually all of these 
cost elements are actual. But if we adopt normal costing, only direct materials and direct labor will be assigned on the actual basis. But as for the factory overhead, it will be estimated. It will be assigned on the basis of predetermined rate. If we are to use standard costing, all the cost elements should be standard. Standard cost for materials, standard cost for labor, standard cost for overhead. Overhead assignment under normal costing. We are now speaking under normal costing. What will we do with the overhead assignment under normal costing? We can assign normal uh, uh, under normal costing. We can assign overhead either using volume-based costing or using activity-based costing. Volume-based product costing system allocates overhead to products or job using a volume-based cost driver such as units produced. This approach, this approach relies heavily on the assumption that each product uses the same amount of overhead since each product is charged the same amount. Many accountants urge that Instead of an equal amount, the overhead in each product should be proportional to the direct labor hours needed to manufacture that unit. Because more labor time also means increased overhead costs for equipment, supervision, and other facilities costs. Generally, neither of these assumptions turns out to be sufficiently accurate in many companies. So many firms use an activity-based approach. Activity-based costing, which is referred to with the abbreviation of APC systems, allocate factory overhead costs to products using cause and effect criteria with multiple cost drivers. Activity-based costing systems use both volume-based and non-volume-based cost drivers to more accurately allocate factory overhead costs to products based on resource consumption during various activities. Chapter five, the next chapter, will explain activity-based costing system. Job costing system is applied through seven steps, seven steps, as illustrated in the next, next slides. Step number one, step number one is to identify the choosing cost object. Yes, as I mentioned in learning objective number one and two, 
it is very important before measuring the costs, it's very important to determine the cost object which will be under measurement. Step number one, identify the choosing cost object, the thing for which costs will be measured. Step number two is to identify the direct costs, direct costs, which in, include direct material and direct labor. Identify direct costs and assign them directly to cost objects through tracing. Step number three is to identify the manufacturing indirect costs, the overhead. Step number four, to select the cost allocation base. Are you going to allocate overhead based on uh, labor hours, machine hours, or any something. This is step number four. Step number five, after you have identified, identified the manufacturing and direct costs and selected the cost allocation base, then you can compute the allocation rate by dividing the total indirect costs by the selected allocation base. This is called also to compute the rate per unit of allocation base. After this, we transfer to step number six, uh, six in which apply or assign the indirect costs to cost objects using the computed allocation rate. After you have computed the allocation rate, you can use this rate in applying the entire costs to each cost object, to each product. Finally, step number seven, you can compute, in this case, you can compute the total cost of the job, the total cost of the job, which includes direct materials plus direct labor plus overhead allocated to the product. Notice that step number three, step number three, let us have a look. Step number three, this step, may be performed in this step number three, may be been for, performed using actual costing or normal costing, okay? At the same time, steps four, steps four and five may be performed using volume-based product costing system or activity-based costing system. So let us now show how these seven steps are applied in each of the mentioned approaches using the following simple case. We assume that a manufacturing company is planning to sell a batch of 25 special machines which will be considered job 
it will be called job order number 650. This job is manufactured and sold to a retailer for 114,000 and $800. So applying the seven steps previously mentioned, we see that step number one, the cost object is job 650. This job consisting of 25 special machines. Okay, step number two, to define the direct costs. Direct costs, it is assumed that they are direct materials, which is assumed to be $50,000, and direct manufacturing labor, assumed it to be $19,000. Step number three, manufacturing overhead costs is assumed to be $65,100. This is the overhead costs. And not that, this is the actual cost. Step number four is the cost allocation base, which was chosen, is machine hours. Machine hours amounted to 2,480 machine hours, were used by all jobs. This for the total production. But as for job order number 650, it only used 500 machine hours of those 2,408. Step number five, you can now compute the allocation rate per hour through dividing the total overhead, which is 665 and 100. This is divided by the total machine hours, 2,480. So the result is, as you see now, 26 point 25 dollars per machine hour. This is the allocation rate. Step number six. Step number six uh, is computing the indirect costs which will be applied to this job. As mentioned in this example, the job order consumed 500 hours. And as we see now, each hour is priced at 26.25 dollar per hour. So multiplying the hours consumed in manufacturing this job, multiplying it by the price of each machine hour, we have 13,125 dollars. This is the amount of overhead, actual overhead to be assigned, to be allocated to job order number 60, uh, 650. Step number seven, to compute the total cost of the job, as we saw now. This job order 
consume the direct materials of $50,000. Also, use the direct labor for $19,000. And it is assigned with, it is allocated with factory overhead with the amount of 13,125. So the total actual cost of this job is 82,125 dollars. Now, we may be asking, what is the gross margin of this job? We can determine now the gross margin of this job by having revenues, as mentioned in the example, revenues 114,800 dollars. This is the revenue. Less cost of goods sold, which is 82 and 125. So the result is $32,675 as gross margin. We can also compute the gross margin percentage. We can compute this absolute gross margin, we can compute it in the form of a percentage. So the percentage is divide this gross margin by the revenues. You will have the percentage is 28.5 percent. This illustration was assuming, we were assuming till now that the company is adopting actual costing, actual costs, costing. So when computing direct material and direct labor and overhead, we computed all of these three items actually. But now we would like to see <clears throat> how it will be the case if the company chose to use job costing using normal costing, not actually, normal costing. Under this approach, using normal costing, under this approach, we have to assume the manufacturing company budgets. Assume that the manufacturing company budgets to be $60,000 for total manufacturing overhead costs and budgeted also machine hours to be 2,400 hours. So this is budgeted overhead and this is the budgeted level of capacity. So if we divide this budgeted overhead by the budgeted hours, we will have a predetermined allocation rate. Okay. What is the budgeted indirect cost rate? As I mentioned, now you divide this total estimated costs by the total estimated machine hours. So the result is 25 per hour. 
35 dollars per hour. This is a predetermined allocation rate determined at the beginning of the period. So when we operate and produce each product after completion, not at the end of the period, after completion, we can allocate it with the predetermined rate of our head. How much in direct costs was allocated to job 650? According to this, job order 650, when it was produced, it used 500 actual machine hours. This machine hours which were used will be priced at the predetermined rate. So we multiply the actual machine hours by multiplying this by the uh, allocation rate, which was predetermined at the beginning of the period. So this job will be allocated with uh, uh, overhead estimated with uh, uh, $12,500. And if we ask what is the cost of job order number 650 under the normal costing, under this second method, we can compute. This job consumed direct materials actually, this is actual cost, and direct labor actual 19. But as for the overhead, it was allocated with this cost based on the predetermined allocation rate. In order to be able to uh, determine the cost of the job, as soon as it was completed. We don't need to wait to the end of the period to allocate this job with the actual overhead. Contrasting actual costing. Both both actual costing and normal costing, both of these trace direct costs, direct costs to jobs in the same way. Yes, as we saw now, under uh, actual costing and under normal costing, direct materials and direct labor were allocated with the actual amount incurred during the bill. Because source documents of these items identify the actual quantities and the actual rates of direct materials and direct manufacturing lab for a job as the work is being done. The only difference between costing a job with normal costing and actual costing is that normal costing uses budgeted, budgeted in direct cost rates, where actual costing using actual in direct cost rates. Calculated annually, at the end of the bill. For more illustration, the following example will be solved now 
Assuming that the company adopts actual costing approach, then assuming that it adopts normal costing approach. Example number one, assuming that the company is using actual costing approach. Assuming that Ahmed's company has two operating departments. The company has only two operating departments, which are cutting department and finish, finishing department. The company uses a job cost system. The following are actual data for the year 2020. This is the actual data. As you see, direct materials, the total amount 30,000, and these direct materials is used 10 of uh, 10,000 of this amount used in job order number 101 and the rest 20,000 was used in job 102 direct manufacturing labor the total amount is 40,000 and the amount used in job order the first job order is 20000 and the amount the amount used in the second job order was 20000 this was for the direct costs actual manufacturing overhead the overhead actually incurred this was recognized at the end of the period the actual manufacturing overhead amounted to 60000 this overhead 20000 of this overhead was incurred in cutting department and as for the finish finishing department incurred 40000 dollars of this total amount machine hours machine hours used the total of machine hours 10000 machine hours 5000 of these total hours were spent in uh, cutting department and the other 5000 were used in finishing department job order number 101 the first one used from these hours job order number uh, the first job order it is natural that uh, this job order uh, uh, was operated in cutting department then went to finishing department so job the first job order uh, lasted 4000 machine hours where 3000 of these machine hours were spent in cutting department but when went to finishing department it used 1000 machine hours only as for the second uh, uh, job order, the total hours, machine hours, consumed in producing this job order amounted to 6,000 machine hours. 2,000 of these hours were used in cutting department, and the rest 4,000 machine hours were re uh, used in finishing department. So required now using the departmental cost allocation rate. He is asking you 
to compute a location rate separately for each department, yes? Using departmental cost allocation rate, compute total manufacturing costs of each job using actual costing, actual cost. To solve this problem, let us see. At first, we have the total manufacturing costs of the factory divided into two groups, actual direct costs, which include direct material and direct labor, and the other group is for the actual indirect, actual indirect overhead costs. Actual overhead <coughs> costs amounted to 6,000 as mentioned here, 6,000. And as for the actual direct costs, it consists of uh, direct materials, 30,000 and direct manufacturing. All of these figures are mentioned in the example. Now, the company used these costs in producing two jobs. First, we trace the actual direct costs to be assigned directly to the jobs using it. Through tracing, we know that, and this was mentioned in the example. Here, eh? as you see, direct materials and direct labor assigned to each one, traced to each job. So we took these figures ready and recorded it in the cost report of each job order. It's so easy. The problem is in allocating the actual indirect costs. To allocate these costs, we make a table consisting of the departments. We have cutting department and finishing department. The, over, the total overhead costs, which amounted $6,000, as mentioned in the uh, uh, example, 20,000 of this amount will, was used in cutting department. And the rest, which is $40,000, is used in the second department, which is the finishing department. This is the actual overhead of each department. So in order to compute a location rate separately for each department, we have to divide the overhead cost of each department by the allocation base, which was machine hours. Allocation base for the first department was 5,000 machine hours. And also for the second department, it is, for instance, 5,000 machine hours. So by dividing, we came to four dollars per machine hour in cutting department and eight dollars per hour for the finishing department. What does this mean? This means that any job order consume one hour in the cutting department 
should be assigned with four dollars. If the job order consumed two hours, it should be assigned with two times four, eight dollars, and so on. So let us now see. It is mentioned in the example that job, the first job order consumed 1,000 machine hour when operated in finishing department. So 1,000 machine hour multiplied by the price of the hour, which was $8. So this job order should be assigned with 8,000 overhead from the finishing department. Also, the second job was consuming, consumed 4,000 machine hours when was operated in the finishing department. So 4,000 machine hours should be multiplied by the allocation rate per hour in this department, which was 8,000. So the total to be allocated to this job order amounts to $32,000. Also, as for the cutting department, we will see that job order, the first job order, consumed 3,000 machine hours from this department. As for the hour, since the allocation rate per hour here in this department amounted to $4 per hour, so the 3,000 machine hours should be multiplied by the allocation rate, which is $4, and the amount will be 12,000 uh, overhead. So the total cost of this job order will be 30,000 as direct costs plus 20,000 as indirect costs, and the total will be $50,000. This is the total cost of this job. Also, as for the second job, when it was operated in manufactured in cutting department, it lasted 2,000 machine hours. So this time multiplied by the allocation rate of this uh, cutting department, which was $4, so the amount to be allocated for this to this job amounted to 8,000 and the total of overhead allocated to this job order amounted to 40,000. And adding this amount to the direct costs allocated, uh, assigned to this, we have the total cost of this job order to be $80,000. This was the solution of the example, assuming that the company is using actual costing. So let us now see what if the company decided to use normal costing. The same example, assuming that the company preferred to use normal costing, using the departmental cost allocation rates, and assuming that Ahmed's company, the same company, uses normal costing, given the following estimates that were set at the beginning, at the beginning of the year. At the beginning of the year, the budgeted manufacturing overhead costs was estimated to be 
25,000 as for cutting department and 45,000 as for the finishing department. This is the budgeted manufacturing overhead costs. And the budgeted machine hours were, which were determined, estimated at the beginning of the period, it was 5,000 machine hour for cutting department and 9,000 machine hours for finishing department. Required compute total manufacturing costs of each job using normal costing. In this case, you will see that You will see that actual indirect costs 60,000, as mentioned before, and actual direct costs were 30,000 plus 40,000 for materials and labor. As for the, we are using now normal costing. Under normal costing, actual direct costs are assigned directly to job orders. But as for overhead, we will not wait until the end of the period to know the actual entire costs. Under normal costing, we have predetermined allocation rate for the overhead, which was determined be, be, be at the beginning of the period. So as soon as each job is completed, we will uh, uh, allocate it with predetermined overhead. You will see now, as you see, uh, 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 cutting department and finishing department 25,000 and 45,000, these are the budgeted overhead predetermined at the beginning of the period to be divided by the predetermined to by the estimated capacity of each uh, department. So we have a predetermined allocation rate in department for the of the cutting department five dollars per machine hour and in the second department five dollars per machine hours as jo the first job order is completed we allocated this job order with a predetermined allocation rate this first job, when was manufactured in the finishing department, it consumed 1,000 machine hour. These hours was priced with the predetermined, not the actual, the predetermined allocation rate, which is $5 per hour. So the predetermined overhead allocated to this uh, job is $5,000, and so on. Uh, now, we came to the end of this second session, and I would like to thank all of you